Chapter 2 The cold threatens to swallow me whole. Maman said that cold air is better for our skin. It will keep us fresh and youthful. In Haiti, we used to travel to the top of the mountain ranges near Al Cap for their cool winds. But here I will turn into a block of ice. America is more colorful than I imagined. The people are a mix of white and not white. If only Detroit had a bunch of blonde, it would be easier for me to pick out a single black woman and three teenage girls. But many of the women look like my aunt with their brown faces, black shiny straightened hair, and their big dark coats that hide their shapely figures. I search the faces of all the people passing me and think of my cousins, the oldest Chantal and the twins, prima donna and princess who are my age, and my aunt Marjorie. I have not seen them since I was a baby. How will they recognize me? I am so hungry and tired. I want a container of hot, sizzling frite from the streets of Delma, my mother's warm, thick arm in mine, and her strong shoulder so I can rest my head. A girl steps in front of me as I fidget with one of the suitcases. She lifts up her phone to my face. Hold up, I'm trying to see if you look like somebody, she says. I can only tell she's a girl by the shape of her body, but her oversized jacket, loose jeans, high top sneakers, and hat with three bumblebees on it make her almost look like a boy. I examine her round face, her deep set eyes, and her cheeks. Princess, I say. Yep, that's you. Dang, where you been all this time? Princess turns and calls behind her. Yo, I found her. She's over here. I reach to kiss her on the cheek and give her a big hug, but she steps back. Nah, I'm good, cuz. Where's your mom's? Another girl turn runs toward us, Chantal. She's smaller than Princess with black framed glasses, almost 20 years old. Prima Donna is behind her, tall with long flowing hair reaching down to her elbows. She's wearing sunglasses even though it's nighttime. Fabiola, Chantal calls. I reach to hug her because she's my favorite. Chantal is the one who posts links to articles and sends me messages on Facebook. She's the one who told her friends how excited she was about her cousin coming from Haiti. Where's Aunt Val, Chantal asks, looking around and behind me. I shake my head, unsure of what to say. What if they are mad that my mother didn't make it through? What if they tell my aunt and she is even angrier? Prima Donna moves closer to me and I look her up and down to see that she is much taller because of her fancy high heels. She lives up to her name with her diva hair and sunglasses at night. Hi, Fabiola, she sings. Her voice is like a billion tiny bells. So good to finally meet you. Call me Donna. Princess steps in front of me and I'm Pre, not Princess. Just Pre and Big Sis over here is Shant. Princess and Prima Donna, or Pre and Donna now, my two cousins. Les Marassa Jume, who are as different as hot pepper and honey. Their faces are mirrors of each other, but their bodies are opposites. One tall and one skinny, and the other short and chunky, as if Princess ruled their mother's womb and Prima Donna was an underfed peasant. Chantal pushes up her eyeglasses and looks over at the baggage claim. It's fine if you call me Chantal. So where is your mom? I turn back toward the busyness of the airport. I wonder if my mother is waiting for her flight to Detroit and praying that I don't worry about her. I wonder if she is still arguing with those uniformed people and if she has thrown those important documents in their faces and cursed their children's children. Maman will not go quietly. She will fight with her claws to get to me. She's not here yet, is all I say. How long do we have to wait for her? We didn't pay for parking, Chantal says. I feel like she's looking straight through me. Well, I pause. They said she's being detained in New York. Detained? What? She wasn't on the plane with you? Donna asks. My face goes hot. From Haiti, yes, but when we got to customs, I start to say, but my voice cracks. They took her into a room, but maybe she will be on the next plane? Shit, we thought that might happen, Pri says. Shut up, Pri. Don't scare her, Donna says. She pulls Pri aside and takes out her cell phone. I'm calling Ma. Chantal shakes her head, then turns to me. This doesn't sound right, Fabiola, she says as she grabs my hand and pulls me back inside. We wait in line for a long time at the Delta Airlines counter before finally reaching the man at the desk. Hello, sir. We're looking for a passenger who might be on the next flight from New York. Chantal's English is like that of the news people on TV. Her voice is high and soft, and every sentence sounds like a question, even when she gives them my name and my mother's name. It's as if she isn't sure of anything, and this uniformed man behind the desk and the, compu at, and the computer will have all the answers in the universe. I spell out Maman's name for Chantal, who then spells it out for the man behind the counter. 
He prints Chantal a piece of paper and she steps off to the side. I follow her as she starts searching her phone for answers. What's your mother's birthday? I tell her. Then she asks if my mother has a middle name. I tell her that too. She shakes her head. Chantal shows me her phone. My mother's name is on the screen. All the other words and numbers, I don't understand. Fabiola, your mother's going to be sent to an immigration de detention center in New Jersey. She's not coming to Detroit, Chantal says. She pauses and the corners of her mouth turn down. They're planning on sending her back to Haiti. I can see Pri and Donna watching me from a few feet away. Donna has hung up the phone. Her brows are furrowed and she bites her bottom lip. The same look is on Pri's face. I'm quiet. Then I say, what? She repeats what she said, but I only hear sending her back to Haiti over and over again. If there were no blood vessels, no rib cage, no muscles holding up my heart to where it beats in my chest, it would have fallen out onto the floor. I set my mother's carry-on down on the floor. If New Jersey is still in the United States, then we can go get her. We can explain everything and show them that her papers are good, I say. My voice trembles. Chantal shakes her head and puts her hand on my shoulder. I don't know if that's how it works, Fabiola. Chantal steps away from me and talks to her sisters with her arms crossed. Her face looks as if she is carrying the weight of all our problems on her head. We make eye contact and she smiles a little. She comes over and takes my hand. Come on, cuz, let's go home. I don't move. I remember all those times in Port-au-Prince standing in the open market or at an intersection waiting for my mother as the sun went down and it started to get dark and she still didn't arrive. Even as the busy streets of Delma began to empty out and no one but vagabond and Minista troops passed by on motorbikes and trucks. I waited. And she always came. She's never left me alone. Donna just spoke to Ma. She wants us to bring you home. She tugs at my arm, but still, I don't move. Fabiola, my mother is going to handle it, all right? She's the one who sent for you both in the first place. She'll make a few phone calls, and before you know it, your mom will be here. Chantal's voice is candy, sweet but firm. She takes off her thick, long scarf and wraps it around my shoulders, a gesture that only my mother has ever done for me. Back in Haiti, it was always just me and Mama. But now, my world has ballooned, and in it are these three cousins, and my aunt, too. Family takes care of each other, I tell myself. We will get my Mama. We leave the airport. It feels like I'm leaving part of me behind, a leg, an arm, my whole heart.